What am I even? What you am I official. even doing? I want to look official. Listen, it's like having a clipboard. You just walk around. You're like, I never right? even fucking use this thing, but just, I look really important. I'm just covering up my body. Should I take notes to look even more important? Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I'm working. Why fucking not? I'm working. We're not work. I mean, we are working. I mean, technically it's work, but, but we're God, here. Isn't this awesome? Late night at the yeah. studio. I mean, like, Some what do you do wine? for a job? I hang out with one of my friends and we just drink and, and we talk. just drink and talk shit. Yeah. And we get paid for it. Sounds not real. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a real job to me. <laughs> Doesn't it people? There's either two reactions to this. Like, okay. Yeah. Like that's a real job or, oh my God, you're living the dream life. I still feel uncomfortable when people ask me what I do. Me too. Well, because I don't know mine's what. Mine's a little bit more different than yours. Right? Because I'm like, you oh, at I have least three have like jobs. a tangible thing that you can say if you don't want to get into a conversation with someone, right? You'd be like Air Force. And it, do you know what I mean or something? Yeah, true. I could be like, so I'm in the military. I'm in the military. And then it's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Then they can ask all those questions if they want they to. Don't. But with me, it's like, you say one thing. It used to be actress. Mm -hmm. And then once you say that, oh, what have, you, what have I seen you in? Yep. Why don't you tell me what you've seen me in? Do you know what I mean? That's how that works. I'll I don't tell you, tell you what you've seen me in. So when people, when people, they're like, oh, you're on a podcast. What's it called? None of, they're all like, oh, because they don't know. They don't know. Right. And so then when I try to explain like how I originate it, I'm like, well, have you heard of like Black Rifle? And they're like, no. No. And then I'll be like, well, then there's Drinky Bros podcast. And they're like, well, who's on that? And I'll try to explain and I'll be like, well, Ross uh, Patterson, he's actually an actor. Oh, what movies was he in? And I'm like... I don't know. You tell me what movies he's you know, been in. I'm like trying to explain. Like, I, I don't know. He's obviously not anyone that you know. So we'll move <laughs> on from that. Did you watch movies? Teen movies? Yeah. I was like, he was in the early movie. 2000s. He was like the villain in them. Um, I was like, it was a while ago. He continues to be the villain in our lives. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but are we? <laughs> I'm joking. Yes, but he does are. play that character, doesn't he, still? Character. Listen, someone has character. to. Someone has you to. You know, we all play characters. Someone has to play that one. I always said I want to get to a level, not of fame. I don't need people to know who I am, but I want to get to a level that people don't ask me what I do. Mm. They just tell me they like what I've done. Oh, so do when you know someone what I mean? meets like, you. That would be the ultimate you've made it, right? If someone was like, oh, hey, wow, Jesse. I like your work. Yeah, great. Like not so not hey what do you famous do? that people are so no. scared around you no 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 but not nobody where people don't know who the hell you right. are like this mid level I just level. never want to have the awkward because it's me too so I'm awkward about it and I'm like well so, yeah I am a little bit too I why we do we do I I have I'm on <laughs> I do a have mom, you heard a I'm podcast, a mom I'm a have mom you heard a podcast before yeah. Oh, well, there's always that conversation. Because well, I'm like, oh, I do podcasts. You know, I can't even. Yeah, I've heard of those. I can't find it on the phone. That's and how then my I have Uber to sit driver there was finding it. Going yeah. to your house. And when he you're was like, what are you in town for? Right. And I was like, well, um, you know, I'm on a podcast. You want it and to he be was like, something. Oh, that's not a thing that I do. I just uh -huh. never got that. It's mm -hmm. strange to me. And I'm like, well, this is going to be a very awesome 35 minute conversation right? now. Is there any other job that we make? The amount of money that a lot of podcasters make and you still need to say like podcast and then have people be like oh yeah like I don't even think people understand the amount of money and like everything that's happening in podcast yeah. and you still need to explain to them I know what you do I and you still get the thing of oh. about I mentioned call her daddy Right. He had no idea. And to me, that's like one of the number one famous ones for females, right? Right. Like she's or on the anyone. Charts. And then I mentioned Joe Rogan and he was like, oh yeah, he does do that, that thing. <laughs> like podcast. Podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I kind of brought up Howard Stern because Howard Stern didn't really do pot. Like he didn't really do no, podcasting, but he, but he introduced, I feel like the whole. He's like the godfather of just of, the of medium all, right? in general. Yeah. And I said, when you think about it, Howard Stern, I feel like almost you know, the podcasting kind of started after his wave of the unfiltered, um, unedited, you're not censored type of media, right? Yeah. And we talked, him and I talked about that with podcasting. And then he started to be a little bit more into it and realized that it was a something important. Like, he's like, wow, so how do you, how do you guys, you know, get paid and what do you guys do? And like all these other things. And he was more interested in it now, but before he was just like, eh, da, da, da. can you imagine if that's how it was with the job 
your actual right job if they were like you're like what are you doing you're like oh well I'm in the air force and they're like I don't I just I've don't. never it's I mean I kind of heard of it I don't but... get involved in those things <laughs> you're like okay okay I mean you have to like you know, explain the military to them so like, you like your freedom every fucking time Be- because yeah so freedom you have the ability to do whatever you want because of you know because of people because jobs. people like me go and fight, um, fight for you to do that <laughs> not me I'm not saying me <laughs> I was being you. <laughs> no, I know. But like, can you can imagine, you imagine if you had to same explain that? Twins. So you heard of freedom before, right? You're welcome. <laughs> can right? you imagine if you said that? You're to welcome. me, that's what it feels like when someone says like a po- podcast. So what? To me, it feels like explaining the most basic, normal job that people should know about. And it, it's still very strange to me. You I would, wonder when it's going to get to that You would think point. anyone living in this world right now would know what podcasts are. Just everyone in their of mom, them. everyone in their mom has a podcast out. It seems like right, right now. It's like the one go-to media that like every celebrity is now on. Yeah, every reality TV star is on. Like if you have watched any ounce of TV, which by the way, like I, <laughs> Ross had pointed this out earlier, which is true. I am terrible when it comes to pop culture. I pay no attention to movies and TVs and actors and you know TV shows and actors or anything. I don't, I don't know anything. Right, but the fact that I know a little bit like come on right everyone else should know something that's how I feel but I think I've just I must be triggered by it because I've just always been in um job I've always had jobs that you can't really explain to people right and that the first thing is like oh what is it oh cool where where can I find it and I'm like well it's you could buy it on Amazon Prime or maybe iTunes do you know what I mean like so, listen, do you think I'd be taking an Uber right now if I was a famous actor? Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. What have Thanks I seen you in? Out and what it have in my I face? seen you in? <laughs> don't you think I'd be in like a helicopter flying somewhere or a limo? I don't know. If I have to tell you what you've seen me in, how fucking like, degre- like you're already at this place of like, well, I did a, you know what I mean? I was that person when I first met life. Ross. This is probably really, he... His ego definitely probably took a hit with this. So when I first met him and we did the podcast when we all went out to eat, um, I think you had went home and take care of the kids. And then Ross and Dan took me out. This oh, is yeah, when I got yeah, my yeah. peel, that peel shit. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you left like mid dinner because you were like, well, I got it. My face is peeling so off. I got to go. So at the end of the dinner, Ross was like, you got to, because I told them, I said, be honest with me. My face starts looking like shit. And right. So it's peeling. If my skin Ross starts like, coming off my face. You've yeah. got to let me know. He was like, hey, you got, and I was like, it's time to go. Bye. It's time yeah. to get the fuck out of here. I'm not, I don't know you guys well enough to embarrass yeah, myself. Yeah, exactly. But I asked Ross, I said, hey, dude, you're an actor. What have you been in? And he, he was kind of like, oh, well, I mean, there is Google. <laughs> Right, no. Google. He didn't me. say that. He was actually really, really nice. He he started explaining stuff, and I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." A lot of it I didn't know, but the um, what was that one he was in with a nerdy mm, kid, new, new guy, new guy. I watched that. I actually saw yeah. that. And so I remember after leaving him, I looked it up, and I was like, "This is fucking cool." Yeah. For a second there, I was like, "This is cool." You and heard about like the one, the one like insult that somebody said to him on a on a like sports thing that we always say, which is a lady got so pissed that their team was losing or something. And she was kind of doing banter sports shit, talking banter. Mm. Clearly I don't know anything about this, but anyway, she was like, go back to the new guy. And everyone was like, go back to the new guy. (laughs) That's, that's your insult. You're like, it could have been really fucking good if you and just so put we a just, little bit like, more thought. We into made it. a trophy of it. Go back to the new guy trophy. We trolled the shit out of her because it was just like, look, if it was a good insult, yeah, good for you. We'll take it, right? If yeah. it's funny, if it's something, but like, go. You're back so pissed to the new that you're guy? like, go back to the new yeah, guy. She like, didn't think about that no, at all. No, she was just so pissed. <laughs> She doesn't know how to shit talk. The only thing she knew is that she was actually mad. Now she said the only thing you have done and accomplished in your life that you always talk about is a new guy. So sure. Has talk been. About that I again? mean, it has yeah. been. There's all kinds of things. Then they that said. would have been like, oh, shit, bro. Yeah. Okay. But no. Go back to the new guy. Why don't you just oh. go back to the new guy? From now on, anytime he, Ross gets under my skin, I'm just going to be like, go back to the new guy. We just do to it. Make, <laughs> we do it. All the just time. to make it Dan says laughable. it to him all the time. Why don't you just go back to the, <laughs> the new, new guy, guy dude? Smart. And but his answer would be, I would love to. <laughs> what a dream. Tiger Beat. You're on the cover of Tiger Beat. Was he? What well, yeah. was Tiger Beat anyway? 
Tiger Beat was a, a teeny bop. Did you? Mm. We had Teen Vogue. I remember Teen remember? Vogue. So mm-hmm. like it was a little bit before Teen Vogue, okay. where it was like Tiger Beat, where you can like look at all the cute guys that are in stuff, the and like new Jonathan up and comer, Jonathan Taylor Thomas, Devin of Sawa. course, mm. yeah. Oh, I'm overwhelmed. And so you just like sit there and you like look and at the pictures, yeah, and you cut out the pictures and you put them on your wall. Yeah. Tiger Beat, we're gonna get married. You make out with them when yeah. you're watching. Your mom no, comes no, in. No, you're no, like, no, I wasn't no, kissing no. the yeah. wall. I wasn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> exactly we all know he did that come on who did you I all someone at some oh. point every fucking girl has kissed a magazine a paper picture of their girl yeah yeah, yeah. I 100 disowned my friend no joke we went to the backstreet boys concert okay Whoa. we went backstreet boys millennium drama, you guys millennium tour backstreet boys drama going to marry brian and she knew i was going to marry brian and we bought, I bought the album book, right? Like I bought sure. the poster book of stuff. Sure. It was huge. I bought it with my own money. I was very proud. We were all looking at it in the car on the way home. And she kissed Brian's picture before I could. And I was like, that's it. Friendship Let's over. Let's dox her. Who is she? Let's dox her now. <laughs> we're, putting on our, we're putting her on blast and we're putting her address out. She's, she's good. I'm just joking. <laughs> she's got a, she's, Obviously, she's doing, not. she's, yeah, we don't, we need to add to no, her plate. Don't, no, don't, don't, don't worry. Oh, you're like, yeah, she got what she deserved. She got what she deserved. Okay. <laughs> she got knocked out before she was married to a couple kids. She's, she's got what she deserved. That's what you oh. get for messing with Brian. That's what you get, that's what you get for kissing Brian. <laughs> that's a, but isn't that funny though? That's so true though. That's stupid shit that we just, that mattered to us when we were younger. Ugh. Hanson, Zach Hanson, I was going to marry him because we had the same birthday. Zach Hansen. Wait, is Zach the the youngest one? The youngest he one. He was the youngest one with the longer. The hair. drummer. The drummer. I think Zach was the drummer. That's all I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The rest I just mumble because I just. Oh, I knew like, the whole album. I, me and my friend had a map on our wall. We had mapped out a road trip that we were actually going to take. To go to their house. What? That's how stop. That's how fucking people get arrested. That is and shot. Hey, I feel you because I did it to Nelly. Nelly. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You actually did it. Well, I didn't like. We barely trust. The other one we but- were gonna go see. Oh my gosh. So it was Hanson and Brad Renfro. Does anyone oh. know him? He died of an overdose because he was a bad boy, a hot bad Ooh, boy. Bad boy. Brad Renfro. I know. I need to Google this now. Look him up because you know who it is. Old I'm school sure I do. actor. Don't look at that first picture because that's when he was like kind of oh. strung out. But him, yeah. like his younger pictures. Ooh. Oof. Come to mama. Oof. Oh, yeah. Oof. Oof. And what was he in? I know. I was looking at this right. Oh, uh, acute heroin, morphine, intoxication. Yep. That's how I died. Look at his Man, eyes. 2008. He was, dude, he was young. Yeah. He was definitely. So anyways, they kind of lived on the way. So we had this like mapped out thing, places mm. we were going to stop. Smart. Before we went and we were, we couldn't even drive. So I don't know what we thought, like how we were going to do it, like what, but it was a serious. Hey, st- mom, dad, can you can drive you us cross country to these guys house so we can take stalk? us? Yeah. Oh. Can you imagine? I mean, again, I don't know what we were thinking, but it was so real and it was such a like, it was, it was a real relationship you really thought in it was. our minds like when if we met them that's the other thing you think like if they actually see you no. and talk to you mm-hmm. they'll realize that you're the only girl for them correct that's what we thought in our head even in a whole sea of screaming fans if they just like locked eyes with me it was like that in a movie right where the seas of heads parted yeah and, and just you just like yours. see me and he's like, and I show up out outside their house. They don't think it's weird at all. No, they think it's totally normal. They think it's totally normal, and they go, "Oh my gosh, you've come to be with me, and this is no, exactly I what I dreams. want." Yep. So that's what I thought. <laughs> what were you gonna say? <laughs> I completely. Oh, but here's the thing, though. This happens in real life, and this is what gives us fucking hope. Zach Efron right now is dating a waitress, an unknown oh, everyday right. I waitress. Heard that. Uh, didn't Justin Whew. Bieber, I mean, I know he married Haley Bieber, but they were like friends when they were younger and she was a nobody, right? Well, and she's the daughter she, of a famous person. I know, but she crushed on him when she was younger when she wasn't really anything, right? Like, yeah, she wasn't anything. She was but a famous, she, so people see stuff like this sometimes. Yeah. Like, There's hope for me. And we linger on this hope of- Would you ever date someone that you were, like it, right now, if you could 
No. If you think about it, I wouldn't want to date someone that I was a fan of them first. I think it would always be imbalanced, right? Correct. Yeah. Even if they were like, oh my God, you're amazing. I would still be like, I started this relationship with my like fandom with for an you. Obsession. Obsession. An unhealthy obsession right. with you. Right. And now we're... You had no idea who I was. I don't think I could be with a famous, famous person. I don't think I'd want to be. I don't want to deal with, Mm -mm. like, I, maybe it's the jealousy part of me. Maybe it's the realism part of me. Like, I don't want to deal with, like, women constantly, like, trying to reach out to my guy and being all over him and, like, having to worry about people stalking him and all this stuff. Like, to me, I'm like, that's, nah, that's not my, that's not the life I want, which we didn't think of those things when we were younger. We just thought about the crush. Oh, exactly. We didn't, well, we didn't. We didn't think about the actual (laughs) relationship, right? Like you only do the build up part when you're at that age, right? You only do getting to the point where you meet them. After that, that's why these girls like freeze up and like start crying and they can't handle it because they only think about how to get to the point of meeting them. Past that, we don't know what the fuck to do, Here's the funny thing is too, is that we think that those are like the only guys in the world sometimes, right? At least we did when we were younger. Like this is it. This is the hottest it can go hottest a guy can ge- be and then you look everywhere else and you're like there's hot dudes everywhere around us right but we at that age it. guys are such i know we, but we didn't want to see it right well there's such ding dongs that like when you see someone on on like a movie and they're acting a certain way you're like that's the kind of guy i want but they're acting <laughs> but they're acting you don't think about that no you go that's who they really are mm-hmm. the cure it was the cure that really did it for me was With it brad renfro yeah there you go you hear that, everyone? My gosh. Just bring me for back. Brad it's bringing me back. And you guys are all going to tell and Ross Hansen. now? Is everyone going to tell Yeah, who's going to snitch? Who's going to snitch on me? Um, I need to see which Hansen was mine because Zach, I don't think. Okay, by the way, if you look at them all right now, none of them are cute. Like, oh no, you they look never back were. and you go, what the fuck was They never I were. They never were. So um, Zach by was the, the younger way, one. I was. Jonathan Taylor Thomas is not cute anymore right now either. When you see him. Oh, no. No. Uh, I was Taylor. Oh, you like the middle, the, one. The middle one. Nobody, yeah, no one liked the older one. No, because it was too far past. Yeah, it was creepy. Like, had he been a certain age when they got big, maybe. Yeah. But he was already the older Jonas brother, right? Oh, true. Yeah. Little he balding was already. <laughs> already, like, older but for him, he had looking. Way, he had the long, they all had long hair, but his long hair was creepy. Like, the other two was Stringy. Cute, but yeah. his was, like, creepy. Right. Vibe, right. Right. Yeah. I have to say, Taylor Hansen is still very good looking. Is he? And newsflash. Yep. The older brother that we're saying was a little creep is actually the cutest one. Is he? Okay. Oh, Taylor Hansen does look cute still. Right? He actually looks like, with a beard, he looks like um, one of the, the Duck Dynasty guys, actually. Yeah, because, like, I don't know. When guys have, like, a baby face like that, it's hard. When we were younger. You know it's like I mean? Leonardo DiCaprio, like, I just want him to look old at some point so that I could be, like, attracted to him. Yeah. So Isaac is the older one. And he's kind of cute. He looks great. He, he still has the face that reminds me of what I didn't like when I was younger. <laughs> he does, but he definitely grew in to that head. That long head. <laughs> he grew, grew The in. body really... He really grew into his face. Oh, goodness. See, okay, there's a look, picture right now that I have. he looks great, actually. There's this picture right here, and Zach looks pretty hot. Zach has a little bit of a, a, a man bun behind, and he's got some scruff, like a goatee scruff, and he looks pretty fucking hot. Like, look no, at that. Zach still just looks like... No, he looks... Oh, that's the... Oh, okay. See? Zach on the far left? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Listen, I'm not shaming Taylor. You don't shame Zach. No, I won't. No, I'm saying... Me, listen, don't, let me, don't make me cut you out of my life. Of my life. Like I did with Rachel. Because of... <laughs> yeah. Rachel... We got our first name, guys. First no, name. I'm just joking. <laughs> Go through a friend list. Check out all the people that are I'm not on. No, I'm just joking. Just... Oh, of course you aren't. No, of course. See, I told you. Can't you. Be friends with a, I'm serious, you can't I'm be fucking friends serious. with a harlot like that. Like... <laughs> <laughs> fucking slut. You can't be friends with a slut like that to do she that kissed, to you. She kissed the poster nope. book. No. Nope. No, right? No. Unforgivable. We will not ever let that go. Um... What else? <laughs> what wine are, have you decided on a drink? No, what I do you, What do you got over there? So what have we tried? Okay, so I will say this. 
they i do like so house wine the original house wine is these uh this wine and a and, and a, we love house wine by i the can way. I do, yeah. yeah we do you have the rosé bubbles one that was really good i had the sangria one fucking great i will <clears throat> i will say that their wine cocktails are not my fave i did open up one and it smelled like someone farted immediately and it was a drink oh, so that's right because it was a flat i don't know it's, that was kind of weird and then i was trying this like hard seltzer a, Gave, you know agave grapefruit one not so much so nope. guess what i'm back on the black there cherry claw i'm just a basic bitch tried and true can you imagine? go back to what you know is white claw gonna make a pumpkin do you think they make a pumpkin or a pumpkin spice one didn't they did they i think they came i feel like i saw that let me see i'm i wouldn't be surprised i 100 you know there should. has to be a demographic for that like white woman everywhere who like currently right now are whipping out all the pumpkins and the fall decorations and their uggs and their sweater vests and their leggings are like i need my pumpkin spice white yes claw. yes is there really yes is there that real go. that's real yeah so i think i saw it at the store and i was like kind of looked and was like that's not real pumpkin spice listen white someone's claw. gonna buy it people well, are- we've got to try it We'll try it. We have to try it. We have to try it. I mean, I mainly to try it just to make disgusting. fun of it. Disgusting. Right? <laughs> it's got to not but be. But I'll try it. Yeah. Good. Cinnamon and pumpkin. And alcohol? I In don't know. I mean, some seltzer. people. I, I feel like people who drink Baileys all the time, you know, and their alcohol or white Russians. Oh, alcoholics. You yeah. Know? <laughs> oh, pure tried old school tried and true alcoholics. alcoholics. Yeah, 100%. They might like something similar to that. Sure. Yeah, the people who wake up in the morning and put alcohol in their coffee. Yep. <laughs> Maybe they would like that. And Can if I this is you, dad. it's okay. Enjo- em- embrace that it. That what? Uh, stop talking about my dad. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's your dad. Stop talking Sorry. about my family. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I actually aspire to one day be that person. Because mm. I can't I drink love- at all before five just because of no. like, you don't know what kind of calls you're going to get, you know, whatever. So like, I can't wait till I'm at a point in my life where I could put Bailey's in my coffee i hope i i'm able to get to that point where it doesn't really affect me okay so like we drank like you and i right now like it is still takes me about three full days to feel back to normal after like having a fun yes. time drinking yes probably longer for me but you go ahead I mean? yeah so if i can wake up daily and inspire to put alcohol in my coffee <sighs> and still be functional and feel great mm. let's do it mm. let's wow we got some really, really important um, life goals yeah. for us. Look, we're really reaching for the stars We're changing here. the world, people, yeah. and we're doing it for you. We have lofty goals that are going to affect the world mm-hmm. in, in a way that you guys are going to, we want to inspire. We want to forever I mean? change you, the world around us, people. We want to start a foundation so that... <sighs> Mm-hmm. so that people that want to yeah get can. up and drink can can we and we kind of just help judgment. them yep without ridicule we help them navigate we do training courses mm-hmm. on how, how to, to be an al- a functioning alcoholic cover your breath mm-hmm. peanut butter is the best mm-hmm. um just if you want to get it not a mint no nope. mint's not gonna work not at all a mint's actually going to accentuate whatever alcohol you actually did it's, take. It's going it's, it's to seem like you just drank a ton of rubber Perfume. Mints. It yeah. mixes together. You actually smell more alcoholic. Mm-hmm. You're going to need peanut butter for your... I used to do that. If did I you would really? Dri- if I would drive. Somebody told me. I've never Peanut that butter covers up... Well, we know with Screwball, peanut butter is oh, such a distinct... It's like, really distinct. Very... Yeah. A, a, it's a mask. It's like blue cheese. Like it's going to cover up everything oh, shit, that you true. do, right? So it actually, I when think, you think it works. When you think about it, if you, peanut butter, there's certain, co- I mean, what about coffee? Could you still, because coffee has a very distinct smell. What if you smoke cigarettes? That has a very distinct smell. It does, too. but mix that with alcohol, alcohol and it's just it's like. It's really bad. Then, then you're even 10 times, times more worse. worse. Yeah. Because when people smoke cigarettes, that has a very distinct smell. Like I had an old flight chief who I never knew who smoked until like three years later because he hit it so well because I caught him outside one time smoking because he's embarrassed about it. He hit it so well? Yes, because he never did it around anyone. He still. I know. He washed, he he brushed his teeth. He, no joke, he carried a toothbrush and mouthwash and he washed his hands. So like he brushed his teeth, he used mouthwash, he did everything, he washed his hands. You never smelt it on him ever, right? Because normally you do. 
Like you get close to someone who smoked and you're like. So I used to smoke forever. And when I even get one whiff of it, I get embarrassed immediately about how I thought that I actually was covering it up, right? Mm. With perfume or like you're saying, washing my hands or mints or something. Like I get immediately embarrassed when I smell someone like smoke on their clothes or something. I'm like, oh my God. That's like the thing. I thought I was fucking getting away with it. He wouldn't have it on his clothes. I don't know how he would get away with it. I don't know if he like put a certain shirt on and then changed it. Maybe I don't he know changed how. his entire clothes and took a shower. Other than that, I don't know how. But you I have recall- to. The, s- the smell is in your clothes. It's, yeah, it's, in, the, it's in your pores. It's in everything. It's in your hair. It's, it's in your hair. It's, like yeah. He never did it in his house. He never did it in He's his bald, car. maybe. He yeah. always did it outside like with Breeze and stuff. Like So I don't know what he did, but I'm telling you right now that once I found, like I saw him smoking outside, I went, you smoke? I didn't know you smoked. And he's yeah. like, oh yeah, I've been for a while. He's like, I just wow, had it really well. Wow, that's impressive, because, by the way. And this is his reasoning. He's like, I know, he's like, it's a vice of mine. It's something that I need to do. He's like, but the thing is, I don't want people to think of me. He's like, I feel like people might think differently of me by knowing that I smoke. And I don't want to put off people with my, the scent of it and stuff like that when I'm around them. I just want to make them comfortable, if that makes sense. And I was like, oh, okay. It does make sense, but like, gosh, so much to go through it is to like for him he didn't mind like i will be honest when like he was this very innocent uh okay so he is a very innocent loving guy who's very caring and nurturing and he doesn't seem like he doesn't come across intimidating or like he was just a really nice guy and took care of his people but the minute some people found out he smoked they were like oh he's got a different side of him like oh oh, like, oh you know what i mean like yeah. people thought of him a little bit differently and i don't know i don't think it was in a negative way i think they were just like oh maybe he isn't as straight edge as we thought he was and i don't know if he wanted to come across with that image as a professional and as someone in charge of us i don't know i use it as a disarming <laughs> thing right because people think that I'm so perfect and um beautiful and successful and everything and so if I and like you know like they're just they really like look up to me like Jesse's so perfect does she have a fucking flaw yeah so perfect so classy they don't like to like curse around me or like anything like that and so I smoke just to let them know it's cool do you know what I mean? You purposely smoke just to let people know that you're human too. Just to be like, hey, I'm cool. I know. Do you know what I mean? I admire you for that a lot. Thanks, buddy. That's really... Um... Admirable, right? <laughs> and again, I'm going to become a full-blown alcoholic at some point just to disarm other people yeah. and let them know that I'm human. I, I respect that. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. You're a saint. You know? Wow. I know. Like that means a lot Oprah. coming from you. It's the same thing. That's why you drink this weird ass wine and stuff, right? So that people are like, hey, I'm I'm just like you. I just really have fucking terrible taste. I'm just joking. Apparently, and I just Um, pick up stuff. Don't know why you want some advice from us drunk assholes, but listen, we're going to give it to you. Yeah. We have. Gonna give it to you. Who? What is that? Gonna give it to you. X, gonna Gonna give it to you. Gonna give it to you. He was on The Mass Singer. Do we like him less or more? No, I actually liked, you know what? I liked when um, celebrities would go on The Masked Singer. I kind of like it. He's really broke and does a lot of drugs. He's been a crackhead for many, many years. Is he currently a crackhead? Yes. Good for him. He's Good living, for him. He's living life to his fullest. Honestly, that's that's what I'm talking about, and he's still I think able he's to like, like the most but famous, no one hears most about it either. So ever. like, obviously, he can just do it and be fine and get away with right? it. Right. That's yeah. a level of. I mean, it's just more inspirational to me when someone can like do that plus All have rest. some kind of way more success than I. I'm not a crackhead. Yeah. And I'm not on Mass Singer and I don't have his money or career, right? So that's even more of a, a hurdle. Well, I don't like, know. Why are these people complaining like you're not on crack having to do that as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude. Listen, <laughs> you have it Stop so complaining about easy. your life. I'm legit you're a crackhead. You're not on crack, dude. I want you to crack every- head. Yeah. I do everything just fine. Stop bitching. Stop bitching. Like, it could be worse. You could be a crackhead like me, but you're not. That's what I would say. If we were like giving him shit about it, he'd be like, and how many albums have you sold? And how many times have you been on The Masked Singer? And I still am a crackhead? <laughs> I need a fucking award, dude. And again, he probably does it to make other people feel better about themselves. Cool. And let you him know? know. Let them know that he's just like them. Yeah, I'm just like you. On the streets. What if I... Anyways, it's... It's a weird transition. One, one of us, us just a us up like one of us. I was just making up. Trying to make it <laughs> <laughs> you what? Can tell? What? 
You can tell we have an ounce of alcohol in our system. A fucking ounce because we're singing. Yeah. It's a, it's it's a musical episode if we're drinking. That's fine. And mostly 90s, early 2000s. Correct. We're just Nothing being, current. We're being very nostalgic right now. Nothing current. So if you're in your young 20s, I'm sorry. You're not going to get any we of We gave this. you Umbop. We gave you DMX. Look it up. We Google. gave you Joan Osborne. That's a deep cut. Google is amazing. So just hit up They'll the Google They'll give you engine. all lyrics and songs of the era. Yeah. That's music now. Oh, oh. I used to love that. Volume. Dude. <laughs> 500. What was your favorite volume? Right? Yeah. There were so many of them. They came up with them all the goddamn time. I think mine was 13. What volume was yours? three had TLC and Lint Biscuit on it. So that Ooh. was kind oh, of like perfect. the perfect combo for me. Dude, I think it Limp also Biscuit. had early Destiny's Child too. Oh, oh Biscuit. Yes. I know I work out to Lint Biscuit still sometimes. Like Lint yeah, Biscuit. Yeah, you can't say that out loud. That means you're white trash. I may, maybe I am white trash. I grew up in Missouri. Like, well, hello. Oh, yeah, we're trash. Lint Biscuit trash. was the only. I definitely listened to Lint Biscuit. Yeah. Was and I might have been attracted for a second. That Limp Biscuit and Chevelle is what pumped me up before basketball games. It's Ooh. Chevelle. Like I would get angry and I would be like in the zone. Like this is when like I was the rebellion in my rebellion mode with my parents. I was like, fuck them and fuck life and fuck everything. And I was like, I'm taking it out on the court. And I did. Perfect. Right? Until I tore my ACL. So that was great. Well, then we can blame. I know. Well, we're going to blame Limp Biscuit for that. So this is a fun... Way to go, God. This is a fun game to play. So now that's, mu- now that's what I call Music 3, right? Yeah. I'll just say the names and then we can see like how much of it we kind of like can sing, right? American Woman, Lenny Kravitz. Oh, sure. That's an easy that's one, right? Easy. American Woman. But it's American a cover, Woman. so whatever. Yeah. What's My Age Again? Blink-182. Oh, that's the Blink-182. What's My Age Again? Um, by Lamos. <laughs> Enrique Iglesias. Oh. Bailamos. I forgot about that song. Right? Yep. That mole. So hard to concentrate with that fucking mole. I know. But I did love it. And he had that tennis player in his music video. I remember that. The cute blonde. Sometimes Britney Spears. Oh. Sometimes. That's a deep cut. Wait. I've done, done, done on the t- No. Maybe that's not that song. I don't know. Let me Sometimes, see. wow. Let me see. Wow. Wow. Okay, I'll have to look up that one. What's the wow. next one? Shut up. What's Shut uh, up. uh? Sometimes I think that's one. Is that her song? Sometimes, maybe not. Maybe that's someone else. I don't know. Go on. Sorry. That's what I mean. Yeah. Is that it? I don't, I don't, not super familiar. Sometimes I run. Yes, that's a, that's a song. Sometimes I, okay. Sometimes Sorry, you don't I'm need to really hear that. We you. just needed to hear it. But all I really want is to hold your turn. Mm-hmm. Okay. What was the other ones? Come on, you bitch. Come on, you son of a, okay. Uh, all I have to give, Backstreet Boys. Mm. Giorgio, sounds like you know this one. Oh, sing me a bar. Sing me a bar. Okay. Tell me it's real Casey and Jojo. Oh, yeah. You know that one? I know Casey and Jojo. You know that song? Tell me it's real. I would have to hear it first. The Rockefeller. I'm looking at all I have to give right now. Nookie. There you go. Oh. That, he just put that on. Yeah, he just put that on repeat. No, because Butthole Surfers. Is that the lyric? I think it is. And stick it in your ear. Stick it in your ear, isn't it? They have a song called oh, Chocolate Lord. Starfish. I did it all for the nook. Oh, yeah. Stick it up your ass. Yeah, that's what it was. Stick oh it up your ass. I think stick they're up your talking ass? about cookie and stick it up your ass. Lord. I Maybe. Am. I think Butthole Surfers was next. Uh, ooh, I hope Butthole Surfers is on here. That was one of my fave songs, and it's not. Mm. What was next? There's one song. Special right? Garbage. Ooh, I liked Garbage. Right, but a lot. So a lot of if these, I, I don't know. Back. I'm terrible at the song titles, but the minute you, I hear, it, I can sing all the words to it. You guys, butthole surfers. Ah, oh, I fucking love butthole surfers. Sorry. All right, we're getting off track. But this is like I can go down this rabbit hole forever, though. The hardest thing, ninety-eight degrees. Ninety. Out of my head, fastball. This is one that's like very of the era, right? I oh, know, I'm trying to think of this. Shut up. Listen, bitch. I love how you... 
Mm-hmm. Do you have it? Play- are you going to play it? I am. I have skipped the ad. Okay. Out of my head. Why does it, that sound so familiar? I don't know. Out of my head. Is that the one? Out of my mind. Is that the one? Come on. Come on, you fuck. I'll just see if your computer is the internet. That's what I think. Um, that's a, oh, okay. Oh, do you remember? Out of my head. Out of my mind. Right? Yeah. Yes. See? Yeah. Okay. No matter what I do. I don't want to go to oh. Right? This is... Right? This I is love very Josh Mannequin! nostalgic, you guys. Corporate. Out of my head was out, out of my mind. How could I ever be so blind? I was working for an invitation. invitation. Yep. It was, it was not to find. find. Oh! No matter what I say. No what matter about? what I do. No matter what I do. No matter what I do. I love something corporate oh. in Jack Mannequin, by the way. Um, me and my sister, like every time we hear, well, I woke up in a car, I chased away the fog. Oh, like yeah. that is our song. Like there's certain songs that put you exactly in that position that you heard. And ours was like that song on my birthday night. I don't even know what birthday it was, but we're jumping up and down on her mattress in her room, just like blasting it out. Yes. It was like a sister bonding time that yes. you'd be like, oh, right. Mine was like the Romeo and Juliet soundtrack. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. So fucking good. So the good. Baz Luhrmann one. The movie. Everything. I know. Um, I'm curious. I smell sex and candy. Anyone? Oh, yes. Second. Candy. Yeah. Uh, okay. I can't. I, I can't. Here we go. I mean, here we go. We're going to ask you guys <laughs> later on, too, what you guys, like, what is your song? Like, what's the song what's back the one in the that you're like, that, like uh, that's your favorite? That's your jam. It will always bring you back to a happy place in your life. We all have something like that. We have those. I do like to go down those rabbit holes sometimes so to a cringy place. Because there's some songs where I go like, oh, my God, I liked that. Same. And was, like, super into, into it. it. What is like that? been in the back of a car while it's playing in your headphones like looking out the window and acting uh, like you're the main star of a uh, movie and putting your right i've yes. done that before just yes you know what i mean like you're in the music video <laughs> or thinking of a guy and being like uh, i'm looking out the window all sad and shit and being emo yeah i've done God. that before 100 <laughs> percent. there was one that was like Wanna put my hand at ten in a blender? Send a send it from yes. a baby. Like that one? Smash up. Once it's been no. around no. to no. a beautiful baby. Yeah, but yeah. It That's wasn't Smash Mouth. In the two with you. Yes. That's not. That's but not that them. one makes me cringe so hard because I think I like liked um, it, but in a real way. I and when I hear it, I would hear I would hear it and be like, yeah. Hard and want to put my tender hard in a blender. blender. Looking for no, a Tiffany was definitely a fan of Trapped. Headstrong. I definitely yes, see her that I being sure her song. Yes, I sure was. Oh. In high, yeah, in high school. Because I, when I worked at Panera at St. Louis Bride Company, like I worked with all rocker dudes. And so that's all they listen to. And you know how like sometimes when you hang around people, that's all you get you used to? You worked at Bird Co? Yeah. Yeah. And so that's all they listen to. And sorry. So it. Yep. All these I listen to. Disturbed. Down with the sickness. Like Get I, up and get in dark. Down with the sick. Like every in Marilyn Manson and everything else. Like it would always depend on the crew that you hang out with. But you know, like when you hang out with certain friends yeah. and you hear their like playlists all the time, you start listening to it and you're like, okay, I can kind of get into this. That's how it was. Did you guys do, so I had like a mushroom acid phase where I was like super into Portishead. Anyone? Mm, I love Portishead. Oh, Mm -hmm. that shit will take me like, I'll have full on flashbacks with Portishead. Yeah, I love Portishead. Um, They're good too. Radiohead. Do you remember Uh, Stained? I can't do this anymore. I was in like a Muse, was it Muse phase? And like, um, yep. Yep. Dude, I did shrooms for the first time at a Coldplay concert. Just fucking tripping. Just rolling down the hill. Tripping. Acting I feel like, like Tiffany's I, three different girls all rolled into one. Feeling yeah. like I was at like, You what? never know. I'm three different. I love all, like music. I love all music. Except for, I feel like a typical white girl right now. I love all music. Oh, remember when for, we like, used country. to say, did you guys ever say this phrase? I like everything but rap and country. I mean, you, oh, didn't, no, you, you didn't say that, but like there was a moment. I in like our group where it was like I like everything but rap and country yeah oh, you no, would I love say that at an OAR concert and yes. the oh. opening for like Jack yes. Mannequin 
Oreo OER was one of my first concerts in Washington too. Mm. And then Skrillex Perfect. for my birthday. See, and then I went into Perfect. dubstep phase. Dude, I was all over the fucking place. I love it all. I'm gonna play. I'm a huge one, music slut. I'm gonna play one more before we get into the. Yes, thing. let me hear it. Sorry, we're down nostalgic lane, guys. Thanks for putting up with us. What is it? Sorry, she wore. It's taking a second. Short skirt and a long jacket. Is this Creed? Do you know this no. one? No, I know this one. It's, it's been, been a while. while. So good. Hold my hair up high. It's been a while. You guys, is this a show or are we just right? hanging out and having a good time? I'm so you know, sorry. look, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's both. If you guys are still listening, I love you, by the way. Because <laughs> yeah. we're like, listen, it's not fun to listen to songs with non singers no, singing dude, over I you love so it, though, like, like when people bring up the songs. I'm like, oh, me yeah, too. This is the show we need to do where we just hand Jesse the ox. Yes. And I, and I gonna, put on songs that are like, dude, a member. We'll call it a member this. Yes. A member this. It'll have to be Patreon <laughs> only because it'll be so copyright strict, but it'll be great. But look, they'll never monetize. We can't even ever post it. Correct. Doesn't even matter. Just, just spin. Listen, after Let's this, do we're it. just going to do it. We're just we'll going to go down memory it. lane. Yeah, we we'll got it. We'll pitch it to the company. See what they feel. Yeah, we're good. Uh, hi, we can't make any money from that? No. Cool. It's we heard fine. yes. Totally yeah. fine. Do it. I heard yes. Awesome. Okay. We'll do it. <laughs> Been a while. Uh, but then There's like so it makes you ones. think of all different I know, I know. now I'm know. like wanting to play more like I'm really I know and now we're gonna go down a serious advice I route. Know. now we're gonna be serious <laughs> but I think that's perfect yeah we had our fun we did have our fun and look yeah. people need our help so you need to lock it up button it up get your shit together we do because people are asking us for help don't know why because listen when you fuck up enough in life <laughs> I think people yeah. know that we're dirtbags enough that we're like, ooh, we've done that. They're like, oh, do they've that. definitely, Don't they've do definitely that. screwed up quite a few times. Hey, I've done that before. Then I think they can Don't give us do that. something. Yeah. yeah. Right? That they learned. Yeah. They might not be perfect. Well, Jesse is. Well, I think they say they're definitely not perfect, right? <laughs> yeah. I think that's how they start the correct, sentence. Correct, correct, correct. Listen, I know go. you guys have fucked up quite a bit. So can you please can you help, help me with, me with me? Yeah. Though. But All these, right. So these ones actually though are serious. So these are. ones are, we'll so we have two that we're going to get into and they're both about miscarriage. We do have one from a man fan and one from a, a broette listener. So, um, and here's the thing, Jesse and I are going to do our best with these from what we know. We're not doctors. We're definitely not in the medical profession. Um, you know, we'll just give we you just guys both what we can from the heart. Been through it. Yeah. We've both been through miscarriage. So there you go. There you go. Um, okay, so this is advice from a man fan. So he goes, so hey ladies, I'm looking for advice with help uh, for my wife. So we've been together for 12 years and we were married for six. We've been married for six. In spring of 2017, my wife had a miscarriage. We worked through it together and everything was going really well with life. Well, February 2019, we had a beautiful baby girl. Fast forward to May 2020, my wife had another miscarriage. We moved to Colorado, uh, back to Arizona. Or excuse me, we moved from Colorado back to Arizona after being back. And getting settled in, my wife really started having a lot of anxiety and she couldn't shut off her mind. She was constantly talking about how this isn't how she planned her life to be and that she isn't happy at all. So this had gone on to a point where a few weeks ago, she legit had a mental breakdown at work and she just quit. She just completely walked out and quit. She didn't even tell me about it for a week. So since then, I have gotten her to the doctor and she is now talking to a therapist. But nobody in the medical career field and the medical field thinks that it's a case of postpartum depression. What are your guys' thoughts? Is there any direction of advice that you guys can give me? Either way, I'm, it's really appreciated. I love the show. Keep up the good work. Mm. So she had a miscarriage in 2017. Mm -hmm. Then she had a kid. Then she had a kid in then 2019. She had another miscarriage. February, so think about it. February 2019, right? Okay. Uh, they had a beautiful baby. And then not even, not even a year and a half later. She had another miscarriage, right? Okay, so she got so, pregnant pretty quickly within after. Within a span of three years, she had two miscarriages and a baby. And a baby. That's a lot. It's a lot. That's a lot of trauma as a woman. And it's a lot of to fucked up. Experience. God, it's a lot of fucked hormone, up emotions. Hormone, roller, roller coaster, your body's still trying to repair from something. And you know what? I talked to a friend, right, who had a miscarriage. And then she got pregnant and she goes, Tiffany, I feel like the worst fucking 
mom to be ever because all I can think about is the fear of losing this child or the pain from losing the first child that I'm not even happy for this one that I'm about to have. Right. Right. Like it was just something that they were talking, like they were just in fear. They were living in fear the whole time. Like what if I lose them? What if, and she couldn't enjoy it. She wasn't joyful. She wasn't happy. She was pregnant. Mm -hmm. She was nervous and stressed the entire time and was still grieving from that miscarriage. Right. And she felt terrible because everyone was so happy for her and she felt like she should be happy. Right. It's what society kind of told her she should be. And she wasn't. And I think sometimes when you put that pressure on yourself or when that people put pressure on you for doing, you know, like you're pregnant, aren't you happy? Like you lost one before you should be happy. Sometimes we hide these things. We dig them, you know, we push it down deep. Uh, We don't tell anyone and we deal with it. And guess what? It tries to claw its way out sometimes. Yeah. And sometimes in an unhealthy manner where you have breakdowns because you haven't told anyone or you feel bad telling someone the truth. Right. You know, um, he's asking sort of about postpartum or is he just sort of like, what do I, I don't know if he thinks that it is. I I'm wondering if he has a hunch that he thinks it might be, might be postpartum depression. I'm guessing she's never acted this way before. Um, but he said, no one thinks that it's a case of postpartum depression as of right now. Postpartum depression is one of those things that's like, you can't really, diagnose right it's like you have to be honest with your doctor about exactly how you're feeling and everything and they kind of make their decision it's not something that you can like take a test with blood yeah and be like oh you have postpartum do you know what i mean like it's something that so when they ask you the questions about how you're feeling and the thoughts if you are actually 100 percent honest with them yeah. And so what they're looking at is sort of like, are you wanting to harm yourself? Are you wanting to harm your baby? And you know are you thinking aren't. about, no, and they're not going to say that no. by the way. I, I actually have had, uh, an, like that kind of questionnaire, uh, with a doctor, not even thinking about it, but I was just like, thought I had it. It was more like depression of losing my former self. Right. Yeah. And I, kind of was like, I think I have postpartum, whatever. And when they talked to me and asked me these questions, I said no to the ones that were no and yes to the ones that were yes. And later on when I was trying to get insurance for like life insurance, that interview came up. Are you serious? Yeah. And they were like, uh, it says here that you were, t- you went to talk to a doctor about postpartum depression. And I was like, I mean, and so like the rate was going to be higher and all of that shit. So like, I know that's, a, a weird thing to bring into this, but it was just sort of like, Jesus Christ. Like I, but people ins- aren't going to answer. Honestly, honestly, because, because you know that those things them. can be, they're, they're typing it. So if you're, if you're answering questions about wanting to hurt yourself or hurt your kid or whatever, like if someone's typing it, you're not going to fucking say, right. But see, this is like, I so this is how it is in the military. And that's, that's why a lot of people don't talk about their mental health, right? It's right, because it's going to come to bite you in the ass you later. You go to a specialist and say, listen, I am having thoughts of harming myself and my, taking my life. Guess what they do? Like, it's like they, they're like going to help you, but at the same time, like, you can't do your job anymore. Your career is over. Like, all these other repercussions yeah. that will make you probably even push you closer to the edge. So, yeah. so that's why so many people don't. Right. And that when it comes to postpartum depression Depression. the the questions that they ask you are so crazy that you're like you shouldn't live in fear of being honest and have it haunt you down the road to prevent you from anything right and it's maybe she's undiagnosed because they're asking her questions that she doesn't want someone's typing do you do you ever think about harming yourself or your children like uh yeah no no because you're just gonna write that down like yeah that's a hard conversation to have even with your spouse Let's be real. Right. So because that's more postpartum and that's why it's very undiagnosed because what you have to do is admit or you have to really be so far down the road of like, I think I'm, I, f- I have fears of leaving in the middle of the night, of mm-hmm. harming myself, of harming my child. That, when you say that, that's when they go, okay, let's get you on something, whatever. Yeah. Beyond that, it's very gray area. It's very baby blues. You're sad, hormones. Yeah. So as and far I'm as sure diagnosing with postpartum, it's a really hard thing to do because you have to be very honest. I'm sure people are looking too at, okay, well, she had a miscarriage and she got pregnant and then she had another miscarriage. Now they just did, they had a, a move. They just completely moved their life now. And we it's know moves are stressful on people as well. Um, and now they're starting to get it settled down and she has anxiety and you know, like she's just not happy 
like he didn't, you know, obviously break it down with, obviously she had a plan with where she wants her life to be and she's not happy where it is now. Sure. And that could be that's right there with you, girl. So many yeah. other things. Right. It seems like she has a lot on her plate. A like lot. my heart goes out to her with how much she has. And I don't know if she's the type of person that has been sharing it, you know, with him or with other people or getting help or seeing a therapist. Like obviously now she's getting a therapist, which is great. Thank God. Yeah, that would be my she only needs someone advice. To really. Talk to. Yeah. But maybe she was the type of person just, she's like, I gotta be strong. Right. Mm hmm um he's working i gotta be there for myself i don't want to tell anyone i don't want to bother him with my feelings when we do that we get overwhelmed and these things really start to weigh on us and, and have an effect i'm never i'm not really an advocate for psychotropic like drugs and stuff but it is something that instead of going to see a therapist for that type of thing with postpartum i went to see a psychiatrist right mm. so that if they thought I needed something, mm -hmm. they could prescribe me a something okay. to try, which they did. And if you are aware enough and in your body enough, you know when something is like, oh, this isn't good. Like, I tried it. It wasn't good. Okay. Right? Yeah. So hopefully you would know and not get, like, hooked on something or take something down the rabbit hole or whatever. But um, that's what sort of helped me and then seeing the other side of actually taking antidepressants and psychotropics and stuff made me realize that I don't actually need it right mm -hmm. but before you do but that you, you just go you what the fuck is wrong with me yeah. is there something chemical imbalance and then you kind of you go through the steps to realize that there isn't mm -hmm. something wrong with you and there's other ways for you to manage it but if now that you now that you went ahead, though, and mark those off as they're no longer yeah. options. Because your head's looking for every single explanation possible. What right. could be wrong? Right. And your head's going to keep going down these avenues until it's proven that that's not the problem. Yeah. Right? That's maybe and now like you a, can shut that off. Right. And focus on a different route. Right. And that's maybe, like a, that's maybe dangerous advice, but it may be worth it to find someone that you trust, a psychiatrist, that can be like, hey, let's just try a low dose of this and see what happens. Because if she really is having mental breakdowns, that's a nervous system situation. A nervous breakdown means that you're so stressed and fried that your nerves are actually fucking, you know what I mean, fucking with you. Yeah. And so uh, a breakdown of the nervous system in a way. So there are like low doses of stuff, there's very mild things, there's things that you can try to maybe get a clear enough head to think about what you actually do want, mm -hmm. right? As so a, I don't know. As, you know, being her husband too, I think the best thing that you could do for her, like the fact that he said, you know, since then I have gotten her to a doctor and to talking to a therapist. Right. Her being able, even though you'll never be able to understand what she's going through, um, you didn't have that, you didn't hold the baby, you didn't carry the baby, you didn't experience the miscarriage, you didn't have to go through whatever process of getting rid of it, Right you trying to understand as best you can and have the most open mind and heart to her that you can and be there for her and make it about her and not about you. I think that's one of the best things you can do for her as and well. not calling her or making her feel crazy in no. any way is not making it seem like sounds like that's what you're doing. And that does, that would be the biggest advice I would have is just like, do not say the word crazy. Do not say the word breakdown. Do not make it something that is like, she's broken and she needs help it's just, just be, something that every a lot of women go through she's been through a lot let's try and figure something out like which it really sounds like you're doing try to put yourself in her shoes and be yeah. very loving and understanding with everything that she has going on and if she's to if she has a mental breakdown or snaps on you you know i would say handle it with love right not yeah. take offense to it not the yeah. mansplain thing we talked about before, but like be there for her and be like, listen, I can only imagine what you're going through. And I think that's what he's doing. And I think that's all you can keep doing. Yeah. She needs that right now. Is it always going to be like that? No, no. But there's a lot of healing. I feel like that needs for her, like her, and she needs to be really taken care of. Yeah. I, whatever capacity it is. I don't know. And I but will say like having lot. the kid and then being pregnant so soon after. I know. And then the losing and having one. a miscarriage like that fucks with you so much that hormone levels alone, once they level out, oh. are going to make you feel 10 million times better. So and that's the hardest thing to even try to explain the guys sometimes is our hormones. 
and how they really make us feel like, dude, like they're, you're a different person. We can really try to control them as much as we can, but I'm telling you, there's comes a point where you just, you just feel away. Yeah. And you're like, I just can't change it. Sorry. You know, that's, so, there's a, there's a reason why every fucking time, like every month we know it's coming. We know. And still, we're and like, we were trying not to act why like am bitch. I crying? Why am why I so am I pissed? You're like, yeah. dude, you've had this why happen so every month. For, the, for your entire life. For close to an, your entire life. Like, you really don't know what's going Correct. on. But we don't. Because it's so sneaky like that. And so kind of like, you have to even look at the calendar and be so like, and why am I? Yeah. Anyway. But, um, but you sound like you are very supportive yeah. and you're going about it the right way. So just keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, it's going to be a slow journey. Mm-hmm. And we commend you for being that type of guy. Absolutely. Um, we have another one. We do. So we have one now from a bruette. And this is going to be a little bit longer, but I think it's good to read off the entire story because we get a lot of context in it, right? So this bro had said, I, 15 years ago, I met my soulmate. I really believe that we've been together in our past lives. We both were divorced. Um, and he had a younger daughter from his first marriage. So early on, we talked about marriage and family. I had always known that I wanted to be a mother and we seemed to be on the same page, but we weren't putting a timeline on it at all. I never wanted him to feel pressured and we wanted to make sure we were financially stable before we took the baby leap. So finally, about four years ago, out of the blue, he tells me that, you know, we could stop trying to get pregnant. A couple of months later, I had my IUD removed and he started to backpedal. So I slowed up again. Uh, then we moved ahead and boom, pregnant. She goes, I was over the moon. I planned an elaborate way to tell him my first OB appointment with his bone, you know, was with his bonus daughter. Um, we both went to see, you know, him and hear his heartbeat. I was only eight weeks at this point, but we were planning everything out and buying all the supplies. So at 12 weeks, I had my next appointment and my husband joined us. Um, on this one. So of course the PA was all happy and joyful with our whole family dynamic. And after searching inside of me for a while, she goes, I have a tilted uterus. She finds him and her face just completely fell. Uh, she softened, she softly said, so this is where the heartbeat should be. And then all the laughing stopped and I had her to have her repeat herself. So she shifted uncomfortably and said it again. The floor spun away. My tears began flowing. I wanted this so much and for so long and I had failed. I felt like I'd failed. She gave us the room and my husband and my bonus daughter had, you know, held me as I fell apart. So the clinic contacted the OB department at the hospital because they needed to verify the loss. Um, They were able to see me the next day. You know, I got asked if I wanted to do the DNC or let it pass. Um, I asked for the DNC as soon as possible so I wouldn't be walking around with him still inside of me. Totally relate to that. Um, she goes, they obliged and they did it the same day. She goes, I spiraled into a severe depression and I withdrew from everyone. My husband and daughter floundered, not knowing how to even help me when I had always been the strong one in the family. She's like, fuck, I'm crying all over again. God, I'm about to cry. Um, she goes, I asked them to test the tissue to see if they could determine why I miscarried. A few weeks later, the doctor called me and said that we had been carrying a baby boy with Down syndrome. And most Down syndrome pregnancies self-terminate because the genetic damage is too severe to sustain life. So after about two weeks, I'd really tried to pull myself out of the pit of despair that had become, you know, my every waking moment. We tried to go down with our, you know, go on with our lives. And two months later, I was pregnant again. However, the dark cloud still hung over my head. And when I lost the second one, it just eight weeks, she was, I just shut off all hopes of being a mom. So the OB insisted that we get tested to make sure there's no underlying issues or causes and they found nothing. So however, um, we are almost three years later and my husband is afraid to try anymore. He flat out told me that he can't bear to see me in pain that I went through with our losses, but I'm heartbroken that my dream may never come true to be a mother. She goes, I want to try one more time, just one. If it doesn't work, then we can pursue fostering or adoption, but I want one more try. He is adamant against it, and I'm afraid I'm really starting to resent him for it. He has a daughter, and I really do love her dearly, but I want to create that life between us. I, do, I want to be called mom. 
So what do I do? Now, let me go ahead and give a little bit more context on our personal situation. So since our two losses, his lifelong dream of learning to fly helicopters has come true after I pushed him to pursue a flight program at the local college. Then I helped him reconnect with his entire family that he had lost contact with decades ago. Prior to July 2019, the only blood relative he knew that, um, where they lived or even spoke to was his own daughter. So he had been looking for years um, and I also have been, you know, helping him search since I first met him. So finally, last year, a puzzle piece fell into place and we found dozens of relatives at once. So his life has been a roller coaster for the last couple of years. And I've always been the rock or the wind beneath our family's sails. So when I broke over my miscarriages, he was lost and he didn't know how to fix me. Um, He was terrified that if it happened again, that we'd be lost at sea, right? So she goes, but the thing is now, I need this for me. I supported him every step of the way and I've helped him achieve all of his dreams, but this one's for me. She goes, yes, it would also be for him, but he already feels complete. I'm the one that feels unfulfilled. Usually, you know, the answer is communication, but I don't know how to tell him and say that I want to risk severe depression. So just try one more time. Yeah. Um, I mean, she's got to, you have to, or else it's not, I mean, I've been, I was in this situation a little bit, but Ross was like, no, one, that's it. Like I cannot handle another one. Mm -hmm. And I was like, dude, that, but that's what, that's what I want. That's what we talked about. Like that's, yeah, that's what I want to do. And so for, I gave it, I gave it time because I was just like okay I guess just not right now and then at one point he was just like okay like he needs we need to do it like he needs he needs a friend he needs a buddy he needs a brother that would be great blah 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 it's not the same situation at all but like had he not come around it would be it we couldn't be together Mm -hmm. like once you have that in your head head like how do you how do you just go okay I'm giving that up it's something so right yeah I I gotta be honest reading this I feel so much for her like I don't know reading about her miscarriage and how she felt like made me want to cry right Right. because it just brings you back to that place but I'll be honest like I was mad for her towards the end because I'm sitting there I'm like your husband didn't go through the miscarriage you did. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You did. Yeah. Your husband didn't so carry the So if you're willing to try it again? In his stomach? Good you for you. Did. Yeah. Like, I'll be honest. Like, Chris and I, um, like, at one point, I had shared, like, I have shared my miscarriage, and I've talked about it. And it, honestly, it's therapeutic for me. Yeah, yeah. Right? And I remember at one point, he said to me um, something like, oh, you talked about, like, he just, he was, like, upset about something one day, and he was yeah. like, he said something about his, like the, his miscarriage or something. And I said, yours, yours, right. did you carry the child in your stomach? And I'm not trying to take it away from him, but I'm just saying like, listen, there is only so much right. that you can truly understand. Like I was hopeful every day while I sat there, like, you know, literally right. morning, like all day sickness every day and right. carrying this thing and like trying to listen to his pulse and just really like feeling right. it inside of me. Then to lose it. There's a very different sense of loss with both of us. So the last thing that I would want, and I can see why she's starting to resent him. Oh, yeah. Like it either has to like. Because you think to yourself, if this is what I want and I'm telling you this is what I want, then why aren't you OK with this? And you clearly already tried. You. That's the thing. Like we were trying already. And then he was just like, dude, I, like there's too much going on. Like, you know what I mean? Like we can't. And then we like stopped trying for like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but to year, me, two years. So it's like you, you have to. It's a deal breaker for you. Something very important. It's a non-starter. Like either he is going to do this with you or that's it. Because it will always come up. It will. You will always think about it. Will it will be a point of contention. Years down the road, you're still going to be like this motherfucker. 
because once it's too late, like if you feel like blah, 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 too late, age-wise, I mean, whatever it may be. With technology and everything these days, it's almost never it's too late. It's almost never too right? late. So there, you're, you're never going to get to that point. No. Um, but it will always come up. It will always be in the back of your mind. It was with us. It was a big problem in our relationship for years because I was like, okay, I understand that we need to stop trying, but like, I'm pissed. I feel like it's selfish. Like, I mean, I'm just being 100% honest. I feel like it's so selfish somewhat on the, on the, men, the men's part. Right? It's right, a, but like, they're worried about different things than we're worried about, right? So he true. was worried about, we're in such a weird financial situation right now. Like, I'm so, like, they're scared about things not being. I think sometimes it has to deal with control. Like right. a control aspect. Like, I really do think that Chris likes to control things. He likes to, you know, feel like he is in control. This is the one thing he's not in control of. He can't choose if that baby stays in my stomach or not. And that's fucking scary to him. Right. There is some outside force that I want so badly that could hurt me and crush me and make me sad again. And something that he feels like almost as a man, he cannot fix. I just have to go through the motions. And guys don't like, like at least some guys don't like that sometimes. They like feeling like they can fix things. Right. And talk to you, make things better. Like Chris had to let me just go through the motions of being hurt and dealing with the pain and the suffering. And that's hard sometimes for them to handle. Right. When you think like, okay, I understand that because everyone deals with it in a different way. Like I know he was sad and suffering and he, it was hard on him to see me suffering. Right. But there comes a point where it's like, if I'm telling you that I want to try one more time, like I'm telling you that's okay to try one more time. Yes, I might fall apart and break down the pieces again, but I am willing to do that. I'm telling you straight up, I need to do this for my life, for my sanity, for our marriage, for our health of us staying together. Like I have to. Yeah, I hate to boil it down to such a simple thing because I know it was, a, it was a long post and there was a lot in there, but like to me, it's very simple. Like if this is what you want, you have to do it. Yeah. And if it's not with him, it's not with him. But if it's something that you want, you will never not want it. Mm -hmm. So are you going to be able to live with not having it? You think you can, but not, right? So You're going to talk yourself into it. But This is the conversation, and I would give it a little bit of time. Give it some time. Chill out a little bit. But the conversation needs to be had, and it will never go away. You're never going to be okay with not trying again. You're always going to think about it. Anytime you see a baby, anytime you watch a movie, anytime you whatever, you're always going to think about it. Mm -hmm. So he needs to know that. And if he can live with that, hey, buddy, like this is what it's always going to be. Every time I see a kid, every time I see a family, every time I see your it's daughter, probably gonna boil down to every like time I see a gynecologist, every time I see a hospital, every time I see a Subway sandwich, every time I see a Chipotle, I mean, literally everything will make me think about it. Can you live with that? There's going to be a lot of unnecessary arguments and fights that happen because of it, because of the underlying. If you want to let him listen to this, he needs to let you try one more time. 100% your relationship will not be good ever again if he doesn't. It will definitely cause a major shift in the relationship. Here's what I will say too. So she did mention uh, fostering or adoption. What I'm curious, so it depends... Here's the thing. If you go to a doctor, you tell them you've been trying for a certain period of time. You've had two miscarriages already. It doesn't matter even how old. I don't think it even matters if you're young at this point. Um, if you already had two miscarriages and you've been trying for, I think, over a few years, which I think it was like four year, years ago when she got pregnant for the first time, like that's they're going to now put you on some type of um, fertility medication whether it's Clomid and they start you off on pills and they say, Hey, we're just going to like try to make sure this it'll helps. be better. That can help. Or what they might offer you, depending like if you're military or a veteran or something like that, or you, these are other options you can look into is IUIs, right? Um, the insemination basically of, you know, getting a sperm and, you know, inseminated into you during the particular time and having a lot higher survival rate of that, or even IVF. I know that's pricey, but what I'm saying is like, there's, there's other options here too that can have a little bit more of a guarantee that I think. So if you were to try again, maybe if that's something that if you, you guys could agree on something, right? You're like, hey, listen, I do want to try again, but maybe if we try with these options with a higher successful rate, success rate, 
because the doctors are a little bit more involved and they can help really perfectly time everything out. Would you be willing to do this one last time with a little bit more of a higher survival rate like for they, the child? Right. Right. But it sounds like they don't have a problem conceiving. They, well, they don't. But what I'm saying is even right now, a doctor's going to look at this depending on her age and they're going to they're going to see two miscarriages they're going to see they've been trying for four years that have not been pregnant they've had two miscarriages even with chris and i right we were trying for almost not even three years yet when we went to the doctor at my age you know being 30 what 31 or whatever they were like we're going to put you on something right because that's not right yeah because what's going to happen is this is going to take a while and by the time it starts taking a while like doctors think in their head like hey i mean they at least make it sound like 35 like whoop yeah. That's, and they get really nervous around that age when you can definitely conceive much at, later after that. But they're looking to help you out. So if you, I think you're, if you're above the age of 30 and you've been trying to conceive for a few years, whether you had a miscarriage or not, they traditionally are going to help you along. Traditionally. Right. Not because, and they'll do the test and it sounds like she got all the tests. We got all the tests too. Cause they don't want to put you on something when there's obviously an underlying issue. So clear, Chris and I cleared everything. And they're like, okay, so we're going to help push you along because this is what you want. So that's just something that I would maybe look into and consider yeah. as an option. Maybe that will give him a little bit more of a warm fuzzy of, okay, like, you know, guys like to analyze and look at things like, okay, so maybe it'll be less of a chance for her to miscarry and that will make him feel more positive about it. And then she can get the chance to try to conceive again and they kind of both get their needs met in a way that compromises like I don't know that's that's the one thing I can think of that maybe could help both of them if he's just so in fear of her being lost again and feeling so hurt again to alleviate his stress with that right I would look into that yeah definitely for sure as different options and I only knew that because Chris and I looked into these things and we were told all these things and I know fr like a friend who her and her husband tried they never had a miscarriage they just tried for not even a few years. They went to the army base and all of a sudden she was getting IUIs. She didn't even do medication. She just went straight to IUIs. Mm -hmm. And then they got pregnant on the sixth one. So after having an ectopic pregnancy that completely blew one of her fallopian tubes. <laughs> yeah, like it's, you know, it's not hopeless. No. But do it's I mean? not like, done. She almost, You're not yeah. dead. You're no. not fucking 80. You haven't had 20 miscarriages. Like... Uh, the, the main thing that I hear her saying is like, I want to try again. She he, needs this. he doesn't. Um, she, and for me, like I said, it's just very simple. Like you're not ever going to, if he doesn't do this with you, you will never get over it. And he needs to know that that's all you're never going to be cool with it. Mm -mm. So if he wants to go on with life with you constantly, not being cool with that, resenting him. Not even if you mean to, not even because you want to, you just will. And he needs to know that. Yeah. Just so that he can make his own decision about what kind of life he wants to have as well. Because it won't be good. It won't be great. That's like, what it'll, I mean. it'll be something, it'll be fine, but like, she'll be pissed. I'm That's telling you right now, is. I'm telling you right now, when someone has that discontent and they're harboring those feelings, even if they bury them, I'm telling you, arguments start out of nowhere for nothing. Yep. And then when you start seeing a therapist or a counselor and you get to the bottom of it later on, right? And they're really like, wait, this is so simple. Why are you mad? And they, they boil down to it, right? And they pull back all the pieces. They're going to see that you are hurt because he did not allow you to have the last chance that you asked for, that you yeah. begged for. Like your life's complete, bro. You were the one that was going through it. You were the one that was going through all the, the hurt and the craziness and the body, you know, you're going through it. You're asking him to be there for you. You're not While asking you him to carry the fucking baby. Lord knows. Yeah. You're not asking him to actually do all the stuff and go through it and the pain of it and the everything. You're asking him to just be there for you. Supportive. Be there for you. Deal with if there is a fallout. Look, you might have to deal with that. But you're going to have to go through that if you want the rest of our lives to be good. Because otherwise, it won't be. It's not, like the, uh, it's not like the tables are turned and she's like, listen, I don't want to try anymore. He's like, please, we have to, right? And she's like, well, it's my body. Like, it's the opposite way where she's saying, I'm fine. I have to try one more time. One. 
And if yeah. she can promise him that, you know what I mean? Like if obviously it keeps turning into like, okay, and if something else Look, happens. Look, you might like, want to try again. Don't make any Good. fucking promises. This That's is a I mean. really big deal and it's something that you want in your life. I say, I'll and be again, careful with that too. Like if you, yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Don't say, don't even say I want to try one more time. Be like, listen, I, I want to try again. A and child. I might want to try again. I, do you know how important it is for me to have a child? Me as a woman, this is, this is, this is what I've wanted. I would like us to have a family together. I would like to feel complete. I feel like my life's unfulfilled. You need well, to also ask yourself, would you be willing to, if he said, no, I don't want to do that. What would you do? To move on and find, if it is that important to you, to move on and find someone else. Like, I don't know. It's a really or hard. Or do it on your own. Or do it on your own or whatever. So you guys have some, some those decisions are definitely things to I'm make. Really, but those, those questions definitely ask yourself way beforehand and figure out your answers before you talk to him because he may say all right then because you need to know you need to know the next steps of what you would do yeah you need to be and you really need to think rationally because when you have this conversation with him your emotions are going to be all involved and ramped up and who knows what you guys will and you might think irrationally and make a decision that you haven't thought thoroughly through right so i would definitely think about that beforehand that's smart and figure out what you really want at the end of the day depending on what answer he gives you what it, are you willing to do? Do I want a baby no matter what, even if it's with him or not? Just me and the baby, if that's what it's going to be? Or do I want him no matter what? Or do I want him no matter what, and I have to put every, what I want aside? You know? And how is that going to look in the future? Realistically. Play the tape to the end. And I mean the end. Like 50, 60, 70-year-old person being like, holy shit. Mm-hmm. What's I really wanted make that. Me happy? My it's whole truly gonna make you fucking life. And I never fulfilled. did it. Yeah. What's the one thing that you wanted that, you know, that you promised yourself you would never settle for ever, no matter what, you would let no guy or no person get in the way, no job, right? It's like the hard, honest conversations we have to have with ourselves that we would hope we wouldn't have to be in these situations. Yeah. Right? But now we're in it and it's like, fuck, we gotta face music. My heart goes out to you so much so i will be praying for you i don't know if you're religious but i kind of am so I yeah and be, give us updates you'll, i you'll think this my, is one my thoughts and prayers this is one you can give us updates and just think you know whenever like whenever you want to reach out and be like today i feel like i feel like i'm okay with it yeah. or i talked to him and he's willing to try or i talked to him and he said no and now i have to think about it like we want this is one that we want to follow up on only because it's we're very connected to it. Yeah. We've both been through it before. So, and we love you. Yes, we absolutely do love you. And I have to say, I appreciate um, your tank top being skin color. Mine? And then, yeah. So then <laughs> your, the way that your hoodie is. Uh huh. Giorgio, does it not? I mean, it looks like, oh. It doesn't. It looks like it is about to just. <laughs> it looks like a nip's about to slip. Yeah. See, that's She's a tank here top, her skins, guys. And I'm here for it. 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 Right, right, right. <laughs> it looks like it's like a skin color thing. So it looks like, oh my gosh. By the if, way, if that thing just pulls down a little bit more, I'll get you, some nip. Have you seen the girls online who kind of post, you know, almost nude or they're doing, um, what's it called? When they're. I'll say yes, but blurring, it's probably okay, Blurring no. the nips. Yeah, those are all nips. Giorgio nips. But when yeah. they blur, so when they blur their nips or they edit it out and you sit there and you go, listen, I'm literally looking at almost your whole titty. Where is your nipple? Where yeah, is that's it? just the photographer. Because they had to blow he, he it out. He gets rid of that. Well, is it a shirt on it? No. Or it's, so hmm. they'll do something that's, um, oh shit, what do you call it? Oh, I can't okay. It's called, it's called oh, the okay. clone stamp tool. Right, it's kind of suggestive or I got something you. where it's barely covered, right? So you have a strip and mm -hmm. you're like, there's no way that that small strip is covering your entire nipple unless right. your nipple is the size of a dime. I got you, I got you. So what they do is they blur out, or not even blur, but they like completely edit out their entire nipple and it looks like they have nothing. And it's so weird looking. Yeah, you take a patch of skin from right around the nipple and then you cover the nipple with it. That's what it. they do. But it looks fucking crazy. So that's what mine would be like, huh? Like, yeah, it makes you look have, like you have the tiniest, most perfect nipples ever. So, you know, if they're, oh, if they're changing okay. the way you look, it's going to change everything. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. It's like Photoshop, bitch. Listen. I look bitch. like this in real life, obviously. Lightbox, <laughs> bitch. I want you to play a song on the way out. What was oh. a good one? 
What's a what's mm. a good song? We, I mean, honestly, closing time. Closing time's a good one. That's it's I mean, being, that's a traditional end of the night bar song, right? That's a great end to the night, right? Closing like every bar that wanted to get people out mm-hmm. would play that song that I know at the end of the night. That you one's don't a, have to go home, but you can't stay here. But you That's can't true. stay here. Semisonic. <laughs> say it. Semisonic. One hit wonder. Semisonic. They would. And what a hit it was, right? What a hit. That's oh, not it. Good song. Shut up, you bitch. Wait, that's yeah. a good song too, though. Oh, it was. Return uh, of the Mac. Ta- oh no. No, no, no. Huh? I, d- I don't know, but I don't do Return of the Mac. Was it? What if we listen oh, to Biggie Lord. Smalls? Mm. <gasps> yes. Oh, this is the piano. Close. Oh, oh, god damn it. I hate when you do that. When you do it a little too soon. Closing time. Helping on the door. Imagine to the world. world. See, this is why you need this. This is a karaoke song, too. Closing, Closing time. time. Turn off all the lights. You guys know where we're at. Every boy Drinking and breaths. every girl. Podcast pages. Free to review us on iTunes. Zing time. We fucking love you all. One last call for us. You guys are psychotic if you so last this long. Finish your whiskey ER and beer. Hit Zing. us up. With we your have to get to the. I know who I want to take take me home. Right. We have to get to yeah. at least that. Hit us up Stay. with your advice That's what she and said. I know who I want to take me home. I know who I want to take me home. I know who you better be sing along with us. Want to take me home. Take me home. Oh, see, I feel like it's gonna be a long time till we get to that. <laughs> all right. Okay. We can keep it there. We can keep it there. We love you all. Bye. Bye.